Gillum Krakauer. I'm an assistant professor of neonatology at Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee. Module four, oxygen consumption and delivery. Goals for this module are that you know the factors that affect oxygen delivery. By the end, I hope that you're able to demonstrate how to calculate oxygen delivery. You will also learn the factors that affect oxygen consumption and be able to demonstrate how to calculate oxygen consumption. Oxygen delivery is determined by the cardiac output and the arterial oxygen content. Otherwise stated, both the flow of blood and the amount of oxygen in that blood are factors in delivery. Let's break down this equation. Cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. Normal heart rate for a newborn is 120 to 160 beats per minute, and normal stroke volume is around 1.8 milliliters per kilo, or doing the math for you, about five mLs for a three kilo term neonate. A reminder that this is the formula for arterial oxygen content, which we covered in a previous module. Because we covered the formula earlier, I will only briefly remind you that it is 1.34 times hemoglobin times the saturation, make sure you watch your units on the hemoglobin here, times the amount of oxygen that is dissolved in the blood, which is 0 0.003 times the PaO2. Putting this into the oxygen delivery equation, we get this. The oxygen delivery is the heart rate times the stroke volume times 1.34 times the hemoglobin times the saturation plus 0 0.003 times the PaO2. Normal in a neonate is around 150 to 170 milliliters per minute. The factors in oxygen delivery are the heart rate, the stroke volume, the hemoglobin concentration, and the oxygen saturation. The PaO2 also plays a role, but it's a little bit less because it's multiplied times that small solubility factor. Remember that the three components of stroke volume are the preload, the afterload, and the contractility of the heart. These all play a role here because they all influence how much blood can flow. So now that makes our factors in oxygen delivery look like this. Heart rate, preload, afterload, contractility, hemoglobin concentration, oxygen saturation, and PaO2. Let's do a calculation to demonstrate the factors in oxygen delivery. Say we have a newborn term patient with congenital heart block who has a normal hemoglobin, normal oxygen saturation, and normal stroke volume. The only thing abnormal is that the heart rate is around 50. Let's compare his oxygen delivery at a heart rate of 50 to what it would be if he had a normal resting heart rate for a term newborn of 135. So in this equation, we take heart rate, which is 50, times the normal stroke volume for a term neonate, which is 5 milliliters, times the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin in the blood. That part of the equation is 1.34 times 15, and here I have divided the hemoglobin by 100 to convert deciliters to milliliters, times 0.95, which is the oxygen saturation, plus the amount of oxygen dissolved in the blood, which is 0 0.003 times 100. This makes 48.8 plus 0.3 or 49.1 milliliters per minute. Now, let's look at what it would be if he had a normal heart rate. So everything else remains the same. Now I'm just showing you what his oxygen delivery is if his heart rate is 135, a normal heart rate for a term neonate. Solving for this equation, we get 132.1 milliliters per minute. So we find that heart rate is an incredibly important component of oxygen delivery here. Now let's talk about oxygen consumption. In addition to being able to calculate how much oxygen is being delivered to the tissues and understanding if this is an appropriate amount, it is also important to be able to calculate how much oxygen is being consumed. The oxygen consumption equation is also known as the Fick principle and is determined by calculating the difference between the amount of oxygen delivered to the tissues and the corresponding amount of oxygen that is returned from the tissues, how much is being extracted from the tissues. Again, the cardiac output will be reported in deciliters or milliliters per minute. On either the arterial or the venous side, the oxygen content or delivery would be calculated using the equation discussed on the previous slide. Because the value of 0 0.003, the constant, multiplied by the PaO2 is minimal, in the final derivation of this equation, we didn't include it.
So here I show you that oxygen consumption equals the cardiac output times the arterial oxygen content minus the venous oxygen content. So just to remind you that the oxygen content is the cardiac output times 1.34 times the hemoglobin times the, in this case, arterial oxygen saturation times the amount dissolved in the blood. And then we solve the exact same thing once we know the SVO2 or the venous saturation. Putting that all together, we get the cardiac output times 1.34 times the hemoglobin times the difference of the arterial saturation minus the venous saturation. So in this module, we discussed oxygen delivery and consumption, and I showed you how to calculate oxygen delivery and consumption. Here's the two equations here. The factors that are important are the cardiac output, the arterial oxygen content for the oxygen delivery, and for oxygen consumption, both the arterial oxygen content and the venous oxygen content. This concludes Module 4. Thanks for your attention.